Hey guys, welcome to my mid-spring garden tour. I had hoped to film this a little bit earlier, but we've had appalling weather this spring. It's been really, really windy and rainy, and I'm actually hoping it's not gonna rain on me while I film this. The sun is coming and going. I like to film on an overcast day because of the shadows, but we're just gonna have to go with it. I have half an acre, if you are new here, and we've lived here for four and a half years or so, and I have learned a lot about gardening in that time and I'm trying to establish a garden and I'm getting there bit by bit. So we'll start here as I usually do. This bed, I have some self-sown calendula that's just kind of taking over. It's everywhere in the garden and it's a great filler because it blooms all year round. And so there's always color and cheer, but yellow and orange flowers are not my favorite. I have planted some dwarf azaleas in there, some cineraria as well, petunias, have armeria which is about to flower, there's another dwarf azalea there, purple passion, another dwarf azalea. So these are evergreen and they are different colors, these three. We have some linaria that self-seeded from last year and a dwarf hydrangea which has just started blooming. We have acid soil so hydrangeas don't tend to stay pink here. I'm surprised it's come out pink and not turned blue yet. Foxgloves and Daphne bush and this is how the side garden is looking. These Daphne bushes, we've got two, they were here when we moved in and it's very big and it's kind of hanging over here which is not great for when Noah uses the ride on mower but Daphne's don't like being pruned and these smell absolutely heavenly towards the end of winter when they start blooming so Maybe one day I'll take it out, but not just yet. These are, there's some bindweed. These are tenacetum, also about to flower. They don't look overly happy, actually. Foxgloves, some dead phacelia. I'm not gonna talk about the weeds. There are gonna be weeds throughout the garden. I get to them as and when I can, and I always go, oh, I need to weed this. Like, we can all see I need to weed it. I'm not gonna say that this time. This is a rose bush that was here when we moved in, a white one. I've pruned it really hard right back and it just comes back gloriously every time, even though I'm not great with roses. This is an Escalonia. I've kind of tried to prune it so that it will bush and all of the new growth is doing that because it was just like a very straight stick when I put it in, but it looks like it might need a bit more of that. Dwarf rose. Going to be blooming soon. Another rose and another rose. Foxgloves. Got some Oregonum Kent Beauty. I put this in last year, grown from seed, and I'm hoping it will bloom this year. This Daphne broke in half. I don't know why, I just started getting diseased and then it kind of half of it broke so. That's probably not going to stay. Box gloves. This is our Acer. This is, it was a grafted Acer and the top of it snapped right off. And then this sprouted up from the rootstock. I mean, <laughs> it's hardly a tree, is it? But anyway, Acers don't do well because of all of the wind that we get haven't planted all that up yet. These petunias self-seeded. I had petunias in this pot last summer. This year I just want to grow succulents because they don't need watering as often. Hollyhocks. There's our corfi. This tree was given to us when we became citizens so it's very special to me and it's doing really well. It's as tall as I am. I am obsessed with hydrangeas and I have a row of them here. This one is a lace cap. It's 
getting ready to flower. That means summer's coming. Not that you can tell from the weather. This one is gorgeous. It's a very deep blue, purpley blue color. I put some Laura Petalum in between the hydrangeas because they just go down to kind of dead sticks in winter and Laura Petalum is evergreen. It also flowers. So I've got different varieties in between. But last year, these hydrangea bushes kind of doubled in size. And I'm realizing if this is going to get one and a half meters tall and wide, that is not enough room for it. So I may prune the hydrangeas hard back or move these. I don't know. They're there for now. We have so much bindweed. It is awful. It all needs to be pulled up. And you leave the tiniest, tiniest little piece of root behind and it grows from that. You cannot kill it. Okay, that's another job for another day. I have lupins. I really want to put more lupins in because they are evergreen. They look beautiful with the raindrops on them. And then of course they flower. Here are some shrubs that I put in way too close to each other. There's another Laura Petalum back there. Here we have some choice here which is quite leggy. I'm going to prune that to bush more. But as you can see, there was a lot more room, a lot more room between the bush and the hydrangea bush, and it's just gone crazy. This hydrangea is Bridal Bouquet. It's a white one. You'll see it in my next garden tour. It'll be blooming. This I need to move. I think this is a Sarcococcus. I can't remember. Dwarf Azalea. More lupins. Another Laura Petalum. And these beautiful delphiniums which self-seeded from last year or I guess they perennials came back from last year and very excited about these because I just absolutely love this deep deep purpley blue I think it's so stunning this one's fallen over in the wind we've had a lot of wind more lupins which are now flowering Laura Petalum back there. My Wigella is flowering. Let's see if I can get back there. I think it needs a hard prune. It's not looking great. But obviously I don't want to do it just now because it's flowering. I love the variegated leaves on this one. Karokia, this was here when we moved in. And another Wigella. Get back onto the grass. So that is another Bridal Bouquet Hydrangea, like that one. That one is blue. This one was given to me and it's never done well. It's always kind of been a bit peaky and a bit small. It's beautiful. That started out pink but went blue because of our soil. And I don't want to add things to the soil to change the color of the flowers. I prefer to just go with nature, do what nature wants to do. Um, but it's looking better now. It's not unhappy, but it's a lot smaller than the others. And it went in about the same time. Dwarf azalea there. Loads of lupins. Another choisia. These are doing really, really well. I put these in as tiny little shrubs, I think, in autumn. And they've got loads of new growth. Got a hollyhocks back there, which... Now that this has grown a lot more, I don't know if it's going to have room. I may have to do some pruning here. And another Bridal Bouquet Hydrangea and Osteospermum. I have Nepeta or Catmint there, which seems to be coming back. And then tucked away back there, another Laura Petalum. This is so exciting to me. And then the driveway bed. I have plans to redo this. It was looking great last year, but this year not so much. Our bins normally stand there. This Arum Italicum is getting too big. This is an isolated bed, so anything in here is not likely to spread into, well, it can't really spread into the rest of the garden. So I did actually toy with the idea of just filling the whole bed with this Arum Italicum because it's evergreen and it's nice and full and lush looking. It seems to thrive in this spot. But I do like a bit of colour and interest as we enter the driveway. So, I don't know. I mean, the cheaper, easier option would be to let it just take over. But we'll see. I haven't decided yet. 
it's hard to kill the bins stand on top of that one and it just won't die I do have some other things in here I've got some violets there which are spreading nicely dwarf stock which hasn't stopped blooming since I sowed it from seed like two or three years ago I've got some lyrio grasses which were in the garden and I moved it there which I want to take those out because I just want to take over as well tucked away I've got things like um, cyclamen as well which are just being crowded out so I either need to move them and let this take over or take this out Brunnera Jack Frost I love these little flowers they look like forget-me-nots just such a beautiful clear blue Cyclamen tucked in everywhere I have a hosta I don't actually know which variety this is if I can find a label I may have kept a label I will put the name on the screen otherwise it's a hosta some more violets and cyclamens and things under there and I have a dahlia under there which hasn't come up but I want to move that so that's that bed around to here I will start with this bed this bed it looks quite green now this is all oregonum and these are going to have big tall purple spires of flowers over the summer but I actually want to rip it out it spreads and it doesn't look great in winter and you guys know me I want my garden to look pretty in winter because winter is a desperate time for me <laughs> I don't do well in the winter and I want to look out my window and enjoy my garden if, even if I can't get out into it so this all needs to be sorted out after summer it's just not working I have put in a magnolia this will only get to about two and a half meters tall that's a port wine magnolia and then here I've got some aquilegia or columbine or granny's bonnets but it's not the best spot for them I mean the growing conditions are great but it's a dark flower against a dark screen and that doesn't work I'd rather have something lighter or white there so I'm probably going to move that these are candy tuft self-seeded from last year so I'll just let them do their thing this summer and then sort this all out probably in autumn or winter I like to go to the nursery and buy my plants in winter because then I know how they're going to look in winter and I buy plants that seem to be happy and healthy and full of leaves in winter and put those in so I have some self-seeded alyssum carpet of snow and then this is echinacea that has come up so again I'm probably gonna move that because they just completely disappear in winter and this spot is right by, by our guest house so the guests use the garage they come and go right here so I really want it to look good all year round we have some lavender that as you can see the bees are loving this is lavender major Got some tulips back there which are pretty much finished more calendula some primroses or primulas any dead hitting another dwarf hydrangea twisty bit of driftwood that's fun to just pop in for a bit of texture into some blank spaces in the garden I kind of want to add more big pieces of driftwood or rocks or sculptures actually all of the above into my garden it's just sourcing them driftwood's not a problem we have a beach nearby which has tons of driftwood but yeah I want to get a bit more kind of that sort of thing this is self-seeded oregano which came from there and yes I do use it in my cooking and I do dry it so again that's also gonna have purple flowers more lavender calendula alyssum violets there nipeter pansies most of these were just done from seed quick overview as I'm looking out of the house I'm getting less and less happy with this looking out over winter was great the lavender wasn't blooming but there was a lot of calendula and some color and the escalonia had some pink blossoms on and 
it was great but now that spring is progressing I'm just seeing orange and purple and it's too much I've got purple pansies all of the orange calendula purple aquilegia purple lavender and centauria over there and I just want to kind of switch it up a bit so I'm going to pull out a lot of these calendula and then put in more pink maybe some whites but I'll show you what else is going on up here now some scabiosa I had one little plant that I bought about three or four years ago and this is seeded itself there and that one plant has spread it was just a little patch that big and now it's spread all of there which is nice so that is how the flower looks very pretty and I can also save seed from it some liriope here we have ranunculus that's come up a Daphne that's coming back but yeah this is pretty bare in the winter some more this path is working really really well and I'm I think this garden for the most part looks pretty good I'm really happy with it Centauria kind of a better mix of colors from this angle there's a penstemon electric blue that I started from seed last year but you can't see it from the house because of the lavender that's in the way I do love blue flowers some more scabiosa pansies everywhere calendula and then of course the aquilegia that's all flowering now Before I turn around that way, I'm just going to show you, because I always forget to show you my pots. I've got my spring wreath on the door, and these are the purists that I have in pots. They've finished flowering. These are hanging in there. They survived a very hot, sunny summer in this spot. I do water them, and I've now mulched them with stone. So it's not their most preferred growing conditions, but they seem to be hanging in there. So. If they conk out or if they start looking unhappy I'll move them into the garden and put something else in here maybe hebes but there's lots of new growth on this one in particular a few leftover flowers these pots empty <laughs> shameful and as you can see I've got a bunch of plants that I bought on sale from the warehouse that I need to plant out so these antirrhinum or snapdragons these are in pinks and reds and I'm probably going to dot those in amongst here just to break up all of this orange and purple so coming back along here there's a hollyhocks in there so this calendula is going to have to go which is fine there's always plenty more where that came from they just self seed all over the garden this escalonia is doing so well I might even trim it back a little bit few leftover blossoms back here we have lavender major English lavender kind of alternating as a sort of hedge I grow the lavender for the bees really I do like lavender but this one wants to go woody quite quickly you can see there and yes you can cut them back but you can't cut them back past the woody bits and so I don't know I had some that lasted a couple years and then I replaced them and I don't know if they, these are going to be permanent. They also don't look wonderful in winter. So we'll see. Calendula. None of my ranunculus came up here this year. Which is a bit sad because I do love them. Pansies. More polyanthus. It's past its best. Another penstem in there. Some more nepeta. Most of my plants I start from seed, although now that I've got more and more busy, I have been buying more. The pentstemon I started from seed, the pansies as well, I think. The calendula just sorts itself out. This is a Nandina firepower. This is nice and red in autumn. This hydrangea is gorgeous. 
not blooming yet but it starts out lime green and then goes a deep deep purple it's just beautiful got hollyhocks there foxglove oh i didn't show you our virginia creepers back in leaf these posts used to have a shade sail that was over there but we get such high winds that it actually ripped and we didn't want to be putting it up and taking it down so we just decided to put it away and just grow something up the post we did think about taking the post out but it's fine we've just left them here's the tennessetum this one is flowering basically just big daisies Dwarf azalea, more tennessetum. These daisies, I think, self seeded from the grass. These are the little daisies that just grow in the lawn. Quite like it there. I think this is marjoram. I know I had marjoram somewhere. Dwarf azalea. Delphinium back here that's not flowering. Another hollyhocks. Another Nandina. I think this is Nepeta. And then wild creeping thyme in this corner because that can be trodden on. This is how the greenhouse is looking. It's a hot mess inside the greenhouse. And I have polyanthus or primroses that are past their best in the boots. This little garden's doing okay. So I've got a pot of daffodils that I just kind of move out of the way when they finish blooming and bring them out each spring, put them wherever. Polyanthus. I've got cyclamen here. Pansies. Poppies. These are just self-seeded. Back there I've got a hellebore seems to be flowering and flopping down onto the ground always calendula equilegia lupins look how beautiful the drops look on the leaves more lupins that stake was for an iris that i bought last year and planted here and it didn't flower this year and then I learned from my Facebook gardening group that I'm in, not my group, the group that I'm in, that they need to be planted with the rhizome exposed because they need sunlight. So I moved it around here into the sun, <laughs> that's before the lupin kind of took over, with the rhizome exposed but I think it's too late for it to bloom this year. But I love the poppies. So that's how that's looking a little bit of an overview from this point that new bed I'll talk about in a minute we'll go around this bed also in a minute and this is how the veggie garden is looking all of the beds are in and some of them are even uncovered and planted up so coming along here I was going to have a row of sunflowers here but the snails ate all of my seedlings, so I may try again, but late in the season, we'll see. I'll probably plant some more. I do have seeds, but I just thought they would look so cheery against that side of the greenhouse. I need to plant these out. These are seedlings that I started last spring, like a year ago, and haven't planted them out. Most of it is milkweed or swan plants for the butterflies, but I do have some other things. There's a self-seeded foxglove come up in one of them this is a row of fatinia or red robin and in two years time it will be that big because that's how long that took to grow from little sticks like this you would have heard all of this in vlogs so this is what I call the courtyard garden we have a hebe lavender lace and a hodgepodge of all kinds of things I'm busy pulling up the stepping stones and redoing all of this I just put the stepping stones, like the log slices, in between just to keep the weeds down and mark out where the hedge is. Got some tulips there. Pansies. 
Everything that's in here is self-sown from last year or perennials. There's a dahlia coming up, illicim carpet of snow, osteospermum, octotus, and all of this is either grown from cuttings or seeds. Loads of self-seeded foxgloves back there. I can't wait to see them blooming. This is made from an old railway sleeper that was left on the property and these posts. However much you see there, there's twice as much in the ground. And yes, I dug those holes and yes, it's very secure to sit on and it nearly killed me. <laughs> these beautiful pansies, they look like they've been painted, painted on. These came up in some of my pots and I don't know if they're self-seeded I don't remember buying this but this is Nicotiana or Nicotiana I don't know how you say it but apparently these get quite big so I need to move them self-seeded candy tuft come up from last year and Dina firepower this is the penstemon boysenberry taffy this gets really big this will go right up to there and I just cut it back in the autumn like right back and it comes back each year another hebe and we won't talk about the weeds like i said over here i have planted out some abutilon chinese lanterns that is a salvia that is grown from a cutting somebody gave me last year she gave me a whole bunch and that's the only one that survived See, here's the veggie garden from this angle. In this bed, I have peas, and I've just put this net curtain over just to stop the blackbirds eating them when they were really little. I could probably come off now. It's actually ripped there because of the winds we get. So, yep, needs to come off. So, I've got peas growing up a little arch that I made from cage wire. These are covered up just so that the weeds don't take over in between when I'm planting my crops. All of these are, except for the end one, which is cucumbers, all of these are tomatoes. I need to get more rebar for them to climb up. Tomatoes, tomatoes, uh, leftover brassicas. I think there's a cauliflower that needs harvesting in there. Tomatoes, carrots. And then this over here is going to be our pumpkin patch. A Fertinia hedge. I'm really, really pleased with how this has come out. So that hedge will give us a bit of privacy. The guests can look out onto the hedge and I'm going to put an acer in there when it's even more sheltered than it is now. And I can work out in my garden without them or me feeling overlooked. Tiny little tomatoes, but they'll be taken off soon. I've got basil in the middle. Yeah, these all bolted. It, the weather has just been so bad, I haven't been able to get out and do much in the garden. Beautiful cauliflower waiting to harvest. This one needs to be harvested today because it's starting to get sunburned. Still edible, it just goes purple. Uh, looks like all of these tomatoes have been eaten. And I'm noticing I did not put slug pellets around, like normally I put along the path, and I didn't. And they're all dead except for this one. So that's not great. I have to replant those and only one basil left. Ugh, annoying. I've got some peas going up there. I need to mend the cage at the bottom there because the birds can just get in. Don't know what I'm going to plant here. I was thinking raspberries on the inside. Um, but for now we've got strawberries where all the black is. Uh, on the outside I was thinking passion fruit. I don't know. Haven't decided. Got an Escalonia here. This needs to cling onto there. Hold on to that little pea. This I grew from a cutting from my favorite Escalonia bush. Carrots, radishes, garlic, zucchini, cucumbers. I'm going to do my zucchini and cucumbers also trained up to, on the rebar. I need to buy more rebar, lots more rebar. This is the berry cage. 
So I've got three blueberries which I need to prune because they're very leggy. They've never really thrived there. I know it looks really, really shady, but in summer it's really sunny in there. Or quite sunny, although this has grown a lot, so we'll see this year. I don't know. I mean, they're not causing any trouble, but they're also not exactly thriving. Strawberry beds. This is where the raised bed used to be. Still got some excess soil. I'm going to be doing tomatoes here this year string trained on there and then going forward I don't know I haven't decided um, what should we do next this bed so here we have okay the trees ancient apple tree that's never been tended or pruned and is just out of control uh, another one which Grant wants to take out and an olive tree ditto well ditto never been pruned or looked after so here we have some, I think that's Centauria, Scabiosa. Uh, this is Campanula, this one going to flower. Hellebores, I think that's English Thoroughbred. More Scabiosa. And we have Aquilegia or you can see why they're called granny's bonnets when you see these particular ones. Cyclamen. Look at these, these are so pretty. I think this is William Guinness. Hellebores. Calendula. Cyclamen. Polyanthus nepeta coming back. Foxgloves. Hopefully they'll be flowering in my next video. Got some forget-me-nots back there. Lupins. A little birdie friend that was given to me by a viewer. Gay, thank you for that. More forget me nuts. Scabiosa. And then these pots have dahlias that I lifted and divided and they're coming back, but I don't know where I want to put them because they disappear in winter. Lots and lots of calendula. I should probably pull some out and see what else is lurking under there that's been crowded out. Octotus. Okay, coming along here. We have a bit of a shade bed. I have Osteospermum. This Lamium, I bought a tiny plant, probably about that size, and it has now spread to a patch that big, through there, through there, which is what I want. It does well in shade, it's blooming beautifully, and I've already taken cuttings and put some of it elsewhere. So that's definitely a winner, and I wouldn't mind if this entire patch is lamium. I have some lupins, more aquilegia, which, again, not the best spot for dark flowers in a dark, shady bed. Focus. Anyway, you've seen them. I have some hookura. Some strawberries that have popped through there self-seeded sweet peas along there, more cyclamen, pelagonium, ferns, hydrangea, hollyhocks, lupins, lamium. Got some violets scattered through here as well. They do well in a shady spot and they're kind of dotting themselves around. Hydrangea, another hollyhocks. These violets are very happy, although the waxweed is invading them. Ferns. I've got a fuchsia back there somewhere. There it is. Another hydrangea, more acrylegia. The grizzlinia just kind of self-seeds, so I'm just letting that fill in there. 
Hebe Lavender Lace, Aquilegia, for once not a dark one. It's hit and miss what came up. Anyway, you can see the colour. I don't know what this tree is, but it seems to be flowering. Is it elder? Elderflower? Anyway, Escalonia, Foxgloves, and a Hydrangea. And then, as you know, this is where things go to die. <laughs> we just chuck like raw materials back there, which I do use for other projects. I made this fence just to kind of hide what's going on back there, which is basically kind of a compost heap. I love hearing all the, the birds. Okay, so the shed makeover is kind of recent. I continued the bed around there, excuse the bins. And it looks like my wreath has fallen off because the hooks came off. <laughs> anyway, I made this wreath, which I will now have to, you can see now how I did it, kind of taping in zip tie. But I mean, it's holding up okay, except for the fact that the hooks came off the wall, off the door. These are sweet peas. And maybe I'll fill this in with lamium. I can take cuttings from there. This bed is new and doesn't have anything in it except these succulents, which I pulled out elsewhere and just chucked here and they kind of took off. So they can stay. Self-seeded calendula, a couple of patches of aquilegia, and this Laura Patalum, which was Back in that corner and not thriving at all as you can see so i moved it out to here and then i've got some lithodora crystal blue two patches and i want to put a third one there to kind of spread and fill in here i think it's so pretty but this whole bed needs to be fold i do like that it adds a bit more structure though and it's easier for Noah to mow so I don't mind empty beds until I'm ready to fill them. I want to make a shade bed here. This is a Grizzlinia and these are hazel although after I hard pruned them a couple years ago they haven't produced any hazelnuts. Okay rubbish pile. Trailer goes back there. This is all like the ride on mower and gardening equipment and wood chipper that's mainly like camping gear and that's a view from this corner we have the pool ladder some wood storage and a pile that needs to be put through the mulcher or the wood chipper these two olive trees have been trimmed right down and they will bush up and be really fluffy and nice in the summer. Unlike the ones that are left. Okay, that's a gum, but most of the olives are left to do that. That's an olive. That's None of the olive trees produce olives, by the way. Just long and stretchy and straggly and they just need to be tightened up. This is new. If you watch my vlogs, you will know that I put in some asparagus beds. That is the grapevine, that is one grapevine that just goes gangbusters. And now we know actually when to harvest grapes and how to keep the birds off them. So hopefully this year we'll actually be able to eat some grapes. This is gonna be continued eventually when this is all gone. So these are two more raised beds in which I have asparagus. None of it has come up yet. Hopefully they will, we will see. I need to plant all of this up. Back here we have some sage, pelagonium, delphinium. I think this is tanacetum, although looking at it, it's actually a weed that needs to come out. Dianthus, sweet william. grown from seed. I've got forget-me-nots, campanula. This was really full last year. Maybe they're biennials. I don't know. But normally they have these tall flower spires, but it's been so windy. Yeah. Forget-me-nots. Here's campanula. That's what they look like when they flower. A 
Octotus. Just give you a quick overview of the back border, how it's looking. Self seeded Illicim. Hydrangea. Nepeta. This is Comelina, Sleeping Beauty. I pulled most of it out, but it looks like there was some left behind. Tennessee Tim, Lupins. Oh, they're so beautiful. I'm so happy they're blooming now. Forget me nots. Strawberries. So, okay, this is sage. I have loads of strawberries in the back because you've heard me say this a hundred times. This particular variety just wants to make more plants. Very few berries, but I've put it in as a ground cover to keep the weeds down. Kind of works. Hollyhocks. Delphinium. Illicim. And then I've got a row of camellias alternating pink and white. Facelia, this is self-seeded. This makes a good cover crop and the bees love it. Got Nepeta coming up. Westringer Aussie Box. Love this. Really want to put more of this in. Looks good all year. Blooms pretty much all year too. That is bergamot coming back that just disappears completely in winter but in summer it looks good it's really tall purple flowers also known as bee balm this was looking very as you can see quite green with very little color there was no purple in the winter so i threw in some calendula seeds and it's started self-seeding this is sage blooming nicely viburnum Eva Price, this is finished flowering. Well, there's some more coming there, but it's mainly finished flowering, but it's growing beautifully. I'm really pleased with that. Foxlove, self-seeded. Delphinium, Choisia. So I've started putting in evergreen shrubs here just to fill in this area. Foxglove not blooming yet. More self-seeded. Listen, oh, I can smell it. And the bees like it. Laurapetalum, more foxglove. It's all a bit of a hodgepodge. There's some phacelia coming up behind that choice here. Another Westringer Aussie box. Another viburnum. Some lupins through there. Hollyhocks at the back. I can't wait to show this to you when it's all blooming. In fact, I can't wait till it's all blooming. Choice here, self seeded cosmos. I expect more cosmos to come up because there was loads of it through here last summer and it's all self seeds. Some more bergamot. This, I think, is soccer cocker. Did I put a label in? No, maybe it's Escalonia. Looks like Escalonia. Um, this is a rhododendron, like a dwarf one. Oops, I just pulled a leaf off. More bindweed. Escalonia. Another uh, magnolia, the dwarf one. Two and a half meters, not dwarf, but little. Oh, it's Euonymus, this. I see a label there. So this one and that one are Euonymus emerald green. Choisia, Grisolinia. Disaster. <laughs> this needs addressing. So we've got a bit of a bank there, which is fine but that concerns me. I don't want these logs rotting and then the bank collapsing against the fence. So we need to kind of move that out, shore it up. Here are loads of snowflakes that are pretty much finished. There's a few left. The snowflakes are more bell shaped than the snowdrops and they've got the green dots on them. Some weeds coming through there as well. This is my cabin. That's where our online store is operated out of. A beautiful oak tree that's in full leaf now. And here's a view from this angle. This back corner. Don't know what variety of apple this is, but that's in bloom. There's some more of that Aramitalicum there. 
I mean this bed needs filling loads of weeds but I also put a lot of like wildflower seeds and poppy seeds so I don't want to be pulling things out until they're established although I mean I can recognize the weeds so I should actually get in here I've got lots of little shrubs through here they're tiny still but they'll fill in this is a ground cover I think this is I can't remember I'll put the name on the screen see like these weeds need to come out another shrub a little lemon tree that is actually blooming we have some Tucrium fruticans or silver germanda that should get quite big dwarf azalea Daniel loves this so I had to put some in and that will fill a bigger space more ground cover we have some of this convolvulus loads of poppies come up that I should have sown with sand I know better that's how I sow my carrot seeds because they're so fine I mix them with sand and scatter them but for some reason I didn't and now it's a hot mess well hopefully some of them will bloom we have dwarf azalea I should not be walking in the bed with all the little seedlings some more of this dwarf azalea convolvulus I think this is narcissus it didn't bloom this year because it hasn't had energy put into the bulbs from last year because you no know, we used to mow around here this whole bed is new let me get out of the bed it's just kind of a repeat of those shrubs really over here we have three dwarf azalea still blooming kind of white and salmon I need to cut back these ranunculus they were beautiful but they're finished now Got some hebe in these pots Some more dwarf azaleas and then here we've got these which I don't remember buying these seeds but I had a tray of seedlings so I must have I'm not usually drawn to yellow flowers but I guess these are mainly like they look white so maybe that's why I did them my pelagonium my little friend here my pelagonium is flowering which is exciting this is a hot mess there another pile of wood which is fine I don't mind but I need to paint the fence I don't mind the wood I do mind all of the trash that should go on the trash pile we have a pile for that this is the cork oak this doesn't lose its leaves in winter they just go brown and then they all drop in spring which is fine because then they act like a mulch that is a pear tree back there that I need to prune some more aquilegia popping up along here popping up I planted them <laughs> it's not like a surprise that they're there and I put a hydrangea there this is a deep blue one I'll put the variety on the screen not really relevant if you can't see the flowers this is the workshop okay I'm actually gonna double back and do that because I always forget so I made the step out of sleepers there's a hole there because there's a situation there I won't get into that Oregonum Kent Beauty Pelagonium self-seeded hollyhocks which is not going to do well here and we'll set off the security lights so I need to remove that plants that I need to plant out this hose reel is amazing I highly recommend it I will put a link down below to what it is if I can find one but it's kind of spring loaded and then it just winds back in and you can unhook it off the wall and carry it around it is so handy so definitely a win okay we have some pansies lots of self-seeded cosmos coming up here aren't these pansies pretty I love these kind of antique colors we have scabiosa 
This is Westringer Mundi. It grows lower and wider and it has the white flowers with the little purple dots. But I definitely want to put more Westringer in. Diantha Sweet William. Aquilegia, which I don't know how they're going to do here because this box is pretty low. Succulents. This is quite new, Diosma. This is my new like little deck area which you would have seen in the vlogs. Haven't had much chance to use it because of the weather. And it looks like my creeping thyme has died. Good thing I've got some more in the greenhouse to put out. This is mint, it's doing really well. I said I would show in a vlog how to prune mint so it will bush out, which I probably will too, but what you do is you go down the stem and you look for that. Can you see where it's kind of got little sprouts on either side of the leaves and you just cut or break it there. So you can use that in your cooking or in your water or whatever and then that's what's left and then this will make two stems so it'll get bushier rather than longer and leggier like that. Okay back here I've got some lavender major. That's a pansy, Oregon and Kent Beauty, Gardenia, I've never grown gardenias before. Equilegia, this is Lavender the Princess. And another Equilegia and West Stringer Aussie Box. Which brings us around to the wash line garden as I call it. This needs to be planted up. We've got a straggly little dwarf stock and weeds but I want to put some ground cover in here, fill this in. I've got a Laura Ptolem, self-seeded Linaria. This stakies or lamb's ear, it feels so beautiful. I grew this from one leaf that I picked at the park. So proud of myself. <laughs> that is a pillia that <laughs> is not doing so well. Nandina Firepower, Aromitalicum coming up. Hollyhocks, I don't know how that's going to do. There's no room for tall hollyhocks back there. This hydrangea made me so happy last year. It just filled me with joy every time I saw it because it has the deepest blue, like not purple, but like true blue flowers. It's just so beautiful. I've got my little naked gnome, half naked gnome. And then this is the tree we don't generally get fruit from, but I see there's some fruit on it this year. We'll see if that lasts. But this is the one that blossoms in the middle of winter. Beautiful pink blossoms, which one of my viewers said may be a Japanese plum. I don't know. I guess we will see. The fruit is kind of, here's another one. It's kind of fuzzy, but I don't know if they all are at this stage. That's why I thought it was... A nectarine or something I don't know we'll see there's quite a lot of fruit on it this year so kind of ashamed to show you back there okay so this there was a concrete slab there for some reason I don't know what for but anyway I just built up a little mini bed maybe I'll just put a bunch of pots there I don't know it's not it's not doing brilliantly it gets filled with grass put some succulents in maybe I'll break some off and propagate them and try and fill that and then here I have planted up with these which I cannot remember what it's called I'll put the name on the screen these were on sale at the warehouse so these are very low maintenance plants they thrive on neglect Got some more pelagonium there these were all of my pelagoniums were grown from cuttings given to me by a friend another hydrangea this needs to move so this is the pool area <laughs> it's looking like a disaster we need to fence that there are the gates so we're gonna fence it there put a gate there eventually concrete here but not this year we have other expenses to take care of for example Daniel is going to university um, and then we're gonna put a gate there and a fence there so kind of there so that's why I've just kind of neglected all of this and it looks like a disaster. I'm going to get rid of these lounges. We use them sometimes, but we have to go and get the cushions out and it's a hassle. So I want to add comfy 
seating in the garden that can just be left out and isn't going to stay wet from the rain and you can just use it any time without having to set it up because otherwise you just don't heating unit pool toys old mirror which I'm shocked hasn't broken yet Grant wants to put it somewhere in the garden and I'm like you put a mirror in the garden to make it appear bigger we don't need that <laughs> we have a big enough garden so we'll see and then we're right back to this bed and that concludes my epically long garden tour oh look the Banksy is flowering bees enjoying that hope you enjoyed this garden tour I feel like it's longer than usual thanks for wandering around my garden with me I will enjoy the five minutes of sunshine we get we've had nothing but winter weather so I will take it can't wait to show you all of the things blooming in my next garden tour which will be in a couple months time thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.